talk a little bit about salt. We know that salt is, is super popular. Uh, it's come a long way in the sense that people are getting very fancy with their salts now. Yes, you can get fancy. all sorts of different colored salts. Yep. But I think we just want to start with a lesson on what salt is all about, how much we actually need, where does it come from? Salt at every point, at some point in its life, always came from the ocean. So whether it's being harvested from the ocean now or whether it's being mined from underground, that was once an ocean. It okay. all comes from the ocean. There are many different types, as you suggested. Uh, one misnomer is the amount of sodium that we need in our body. One third of a teaspoon a day is all we One need. One third of One a teaspoon. One third, yes. So salt can be your best friend in the kitchen, but it yes. can be your worst enemy. And the great thing about all of these kind of new varieties of salts nowadays is that you can add a little bit of other other types of flavor in addition to just sodium. Right. And this is, so. I mean, the, probably this is the reason why most people are not adding salt anymore into their meals. You can add a bit of salt when you're making stuff at home from scratch. Yes. yes. Anything store bought, though? Holy moly. Watch well, the sodium. Watch the sodium. Watch the sodium. And one thing too to use less salt when you're cooking season all the way through I, okay. many times when I was cooking in professional kitchens we would test the new chefs and say put the same amount in spread it over the dish put the same amount in throw it in at the end mm -hmm. and you can get away with half by seasoning as you go oh that's interesting so let me okay. quickly run you through types you may or may not know yep. table salt salt very familiar you have it in your house right now table salt is uh, been iodized right in the early 20s in North America it was deemed that we weren't getting enough iodine from our vegetables so mm -hmm. the government mandated that we put it in, not unlike fluoride in water. Right. Not a problem we have here in North America anymore, but it's still a great salt. Thing about it is it's a very fine grain, so if you're seasoning things that aren't going to be cooked like salad and whatnot, perfect mm -hmm. for that. There's a place for it. Got what it. I would rather you use is kosher salt. Why is that better for you? A lot of people say no use additives. kosher. There's no Table additives. Table salt often has additives. I encourage you to look at the box. Sometimes it even has sugar in it. So you've got salt iodine, sugar. And, sugar. and they also use an anti-caking agent. Okay. Yes, which is benign. It, yeah. It's not bad for your health, but that's what stops it not caking. Kosher oh, salt, I see. almost pure sea salt. Mm. It is bigger grain, so it functions better when you're cooking. You wouldn't want to use it in a salad because you're going to get a ah. Yeah. Salt. Inexpensive. Then you move up to pickling or coarse salt, which is just a coarser version of kosher. Uh -huh. um, inexpensive. Nice thing about this particular variety is that it it, it dissolves in water really nicely and okay. it's clear because it's pure salt so if you are pickling or brining yes. it won't leave it slightly, slightly cloudy like say a table salt would got it now we're into the fun stuff okay so why I mean why do you go with a pink or a black salt other than the fact that it looks really cool well it's an opportunity to spend more money yes <laughs> I mean if but, you want to spend more but look at that that's black uh, Hawaiian sea salt that's yeah. that has minerals from the lava that's where that comes from. These are all tainted by different things. Some okay. of it's ash, some of it's different minerals from the ocean. Taste this one if you may. This, th that's flakes, it's not crystals. Okay. Smoky. Oh, smoked salt is the best. Mm, beautiful. That is so good. So what would you add, if well, you're a chef, what would you be adding uh, smoked salt to? Steak on the barbecue, mm -hmm. fish on the barbecue, sprinkle that on top, because you, yeah. get, you get the sodium, but you also get the texture. It's good. And it just melts the moment it hits your tongue. Beautiful. Right. Wait, don't move on yet because this looks like sugar. It's not though, is That's it? That's not sugar. No. It's not sugar. So is that like Taste just that. a dark, a dark That's pink Cypress salt? Cypress sea salt. Oh, it's a sea salt. Mm, not a sea salt. Oh, that, that's strong. Mm. Mm -hmm. Look at the color though. Imagine doing that on a pasta where it's just a white cream sauce. So is it mostly then about the aesthetics? It is. If you're getting into the colored it salt. It is largely. And then there's two more I want to show you. Yeah. Flake is, these two are the same variety. These are harvested off a beach typically France, south of England. Yeah. Um, they wait for the salt to occur on rocks and they just skim off that top layer. This is the Rolls Royce of salt, oh. Fleur de Sal. Okay, Fleur de Sal. Yeah. What is it that makes it so good? Hand Come on in here, guys. We only have a few seconds. Mm, you might want to taste the Rolls Royce of salt over here while you're here. <laughs> the Rolls Royce of salt. Very good. Remember, That's you might not need a lot, but wow. And then rock salt. Rock salt. For commercial use, you know, soups, things like that. All right. Good stuff. Now we all know about our salt. Mm -hmm. Only a third of a teaspoon a day. No more. Please. No more. more. Knock yourself out, though.